Tesla has just released the summer update here. It is version 2024.26.7. I just got it uh, a couple hours ago. It was an update from the 24.6 that came out a few days ago. Anyway, we'll go through all the updates that it, is, that it has, but I just want to let you know that it is full self-driving version 12.3.6. So it's not the latest and greatest full self-driving. Uh, being that this is an Intel processor with the ultrasound sensors, it's going to be a while before I assume that we'll get the 12.5. Uh, it is rolling out right now to vision cars. But anyway, let's go ahead. This update has quite a few amazing updates. So let's go ahead. We'll take a look at the release notes here. So just a quick glance at them. So 24.26.7 says minor fixes. And uh, with the update that I didn't get prior to this, uh, we've got YouTube Music, um, Amazon Music, Parental Controls, uh, Navigate to Sub Destinations, uh, Weather Forecast, uh, Schedule Charge and preconditioning. There are some security enhancements, which they're, they typically don't tell you what they are, and they do have other updates. So there's an update to a game. The uh, climate control has changed. Uh, so we'll be taking a look at all those. So let's go ahead and take a look at each one of these individually. So again, I'll start off with the uh, YouTube music. So to get to that, you're going to click on the three dots and go to YouTube Music. And so this is where you would sign in with your Google account. Um, you do need to have a uh, YouTube or YouTube Music Premium uh, subscription required. The next thing we'll look at is Amazon Music. Prime members get access to over 100 million songs in shuffle mode or all access playlists, plus the largest category of top uh, ad free podcasts. Uh, upgrade to the Amazon Music Unlimited for full on demand access. So, to get to it, the same click on the three dots, click on Amazon Music. And again, you're going to scan this QR code with your phone that has the account on it. So I will go through that process after this, and I will show you what that looks like. The next thing we'll look at is go on green. The traffic light or stop sign control feature no longer requires explicit driver confirmations. To continue straight through an intersection for green traffic lights when there is a lead vehicle ahead, of you and autopilot is confident that you are not in a turn only lane. So if you're using autopilot, it would always look for confirmation when you come to a green light. You don't have to do that anymore. So that's a, a feature for those that use it, uh, autopilot within a area where there's stoplights. Vision speed limits. Vision speed limits now leverage your car's cameras to detect speed limit signs to improve the accuracy of speed limit data on highways and local roads. Detected speed limit signs will be displayed in the driver's visualization and be used to set the associated speed limit warning. So this has kind of been there, I thought, in the in the already, but anyway, it's it's nice to know that it if it thinks that's 50 miles an hour, but a sign tells you it's 60, it will change the speed limit to 60. That's a nice feature. I think that's great. The next item we'll look at is parental controls. You can now en enable parental controls with a pin on your vehicle. Set a maximum speed limit or limit the acceleration to chill. Turn the safety features on such as speed limit warnings, automatic emergency braking, and forward collision warning. Configure night curfew to receive notifications through your Tesla mobile app when the vehicle is driven past a curfew. To enable parental controls from your vehicle on a Tesla mobile app 
or navigate to control safety parental controls. So let's go ahead, we'll take a look at that. So you go to the car, what did it say? Safety, and then scroll down. So right now I have parental controls off. Let's go ahead, it's got that new signal beside it. So let's take a look at it. So we can set the speed limit to a maximum of, yeah, looks like you can take it all the way up if you wanted to. So you can set the maximum speed limit. Uh, you can set it so when, uh, you can set it to chill mode, which is pretty cool. Um, requires a safety feature such as speed limit warning, forward collision warning, automatic emergency braking cannot be modified. So I use all those features uh, and I would, if I loan my vehicle to somebody and they're not using my key, but they're using uh, a different key, like a different mobile key, these settings might not be in there by default. So this is nice and you can just put this on and then you know that uh, the car will stop in an emergency. Also, it does uh, allow for notifications if your car is driven between 11 p.m. and 4 a.m. So that's pretty cool. Weather forecast and air quality. Your vehicle status bar now shows the local weather conditions along with the temperature. When air quality is poor, your vehicle will show an air quality symbol and index value. Tap the temperature on your touchscreen to see the details. So like right now, I don't have an air quality warning on my screen, it is up here. And if I tap on that, you can see it's 26 degrees outside. It's clear. Uh, this is the weather for the day. Again, you can scroll, but it only goes to 2 a.m. It looks like, I thought it only ended at, at 12, so it's going a little bit later. Uh, chances of rain, 0%, humidity, wind, uh, UV index, and the air quality index. So that's pretty cool. And if you're driving in a new area, you, you can get the temperature for that day. Again, it'd be nice if you could somehow swipe this down or up to get like a three-day or five-day forecast. Schedule, charge, and preconditioning. So this is pretty nice. Uh, you can set the uh, charge uh, schedule or preconditioning. They were not separated before. It was a little cumbersome and uh, difficult to understand how to do it. So from the redesign menu on your Tesla mobile app, scheduling, scheduling charging or preconditioning your car, you can select a location and schedule a one-off, a repeat, uh, times for days of the week and also control when charging starts and stops and to go to there you go to controls schedule so we're in controls uh, charging and here's the scheduling so it's on the controls under charging and so we have uh, an opportunity to set the schedule so we have home or something so we've got home uh, add preconditioning so let's go ahead and then if we do preconditioning you can see we can set a time select the day so that we want it to be and repeat weekly so that's every Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday at 12 a.m. It's going to start preconditioning. So this is great if you're heading out for the morning and you want it to just warm up the battery, warm up the car, get everything ready for you. This is what I would do. I would set it for 6.30 in the morning so, so that it's ready for me to leave at 6.30. So turn that off. And again, same thing for charge. We can say start the charge at a specific time or end the charge at a specific time you notice it doesn't have the the uh, charge level that you have but this is just the schedule so you would have to still go into charging 
set what you want it to charge to, so like 80%, and then go to the schedule, and then do charge, and pick the time that you want to use it for. Uh, it's not something I do, because normally what I do is I just bring my car home at the end of the day. If it's above 70%, I don't plug it in, so my car's not plugged in right now. Uh, I kind of try and keep my car battery about 40 to 70. Um, I will charge up to 80%, like if I'm going uh, for a longer drive, and then go from there. But anyway, this is a nice feature. It's so much easier to understand. Again, it's so nice because I want to have the charge end at 6 o'clock in the morning on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So I'd be like getting the battery fully charged or to 80% every day, whatever that setup that you have. And then you just click create. Navigate to a sub destination. Now you can enter a navigation destination that have a sub menu. So let's go ahead and go. I did this the other day. YVR, so that's our local airport for Vancouver. And you can see that it has international terminal, international destinations, domestic. And then if there's more, then you can just go and look at all of them. It does show a map and then it points out where they are. So that's pretty neat. Again, if you were doing Seattle, Seattle Tacoma, see how it already has it there. And then we can view more of those. So we've got arrivals, departures, parking, cell phone, overheight parking, and SeaTac rentals. Those are a majority of the places that you'd want to go. So that's a really nice feature. I like that one. So the next one we'll look at is the improved climate control. As Tesla points out in other updates, they've improved the climate control menu. So let's go ahead and go to climate control. So you'll click on the menu here. And the first thing you'll notice is the keep dog and climb and camp used to be over here on the side. They're now at the top. The other part is if you have it set to auto, you don't see any of the stuff here. It will just automatically go to try to keep the temperature at low. And so the fan speed is down on the bottom now. So we'll just bring that down. We've got the defrost and windshield piece down here. Um, the other part you can see is the heated steering wheel is for the driver is here. So it's on the left side, same as the seat, same, same function, but you're looking to the left and then the passenger is over there. So what does it look like for the back seat? So there's the back seat there. And again, we can turn them all on individually. We can have them at different settings. And another feature I, I see here is all off. So that wasn't there before. You can just turn them all off. We'll go back to the front. So these controls here were on the bottom before and this fan speed stuff was on the top. So they move things around. Um, you can see I don't have a passenger in my car, so this is off. I can turn it on, it looks like, by just touching up there, which is nice. Looks like there's, I'm not seeing a place where I can turn this off. What happens when I turn it back on? So you can turn it on, but you can't turn it off. So that's all there is in the summer update. There's quite a few, a couple I really like, like the YouTube music, Prime Music. I love that weather piece, the charging uh, menu, the parental controls. There's quite a few nice things here. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, please like and subscribe. Again, thanks for watching the video.